are back on this Friday. You guys will be meeting at Sean and Bridget's house. So don't forget Life Group. Don't forget to go have dinner, have a date, and then come to Life Group at 7 p.m. this Friday. Women. The title of our coffee get-togethers is called Lovely. Is that not just the most beautiful name? So we are having a lovely gathering this Saturday over at the Public Works Coffee Shop, which is over there off of Water Street. So if you could come between 9.30, 11.30, it's kind of one of those come and goes. You can stay the whole time or you can come for just part of it. We would love you to come. Fellowship, um, it's just a really nice time that we just get together and we get together all of our lovely ladies and, and, and it's very sweet fellowship. So come to that this Saturday if you are available. Then next month on March 17th, we have what's called our Thrive Gathering. This gathering is for everyone who is currently serving in a department. We meet quarterly. And so if you are serving in the welcome department, the sound department, children's, anywhere, we want you to come. It's a time where we just, we encourage you, you hear any updates of what's going on, and it's just an important part of what we do here. Now, if you're new here and you want to serve, you are ready to serve, we welcome you to come so we can see where we can plug you into. So that is going to be Sunday, March 17th. That is right after service here. So just if you are in a department, your department heads will be contacting you to see if you are going to be able to make it that day. It's a great time. Quarterly we do this. It's an important, vital part of what we do here in the com at, um, Empowered Life Church. Also, we have men. You have a men's breakfast. It's a little further out, but we want to give you a heads up so that you can sign up online. This is going to be an important men's breakfast just with what you're going to be doing. Blaine will share more about it. That is going to be April 13th, Saturday, April 13th. So sign up online, men, to join that. You're not going to want to miss that breakfast. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Jerry, who has... Um, a few things he wants to share before the message. All righty. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, just real quick. The Bible says that um, poverty and shame come to those who refuse instruction. And here is daddy giving some instruction. Make sure, because we want to always have respect for those, and honor for those who are up here. So right as love time ends, so should all the conversation. Because if you are up here, or your child, or your grandchild, and people are talking over them, that wouldn't be very fun, wouldn't it? You'd probably throw punch them. So just make sure that when you walk in, that right as love time is over, hey, come on and have a seat. And, uh, you know, I mean, y'all, you know, if y'all can't get the hugs and kisses done in 10 minutes, you, I mean, y'all got to, you know, have some, have a long time. So anyway, if you all could do that, that'd be great. And um, it'd be awesome. So, all right. Um, y'all still love me? All right, cool. Hey, you know what? Some, I remember when I was. I think I was 19 or 20, and my dad came to me and said, son, I love you with all my heart, but if you ever feel like that you can't follow the instructions in this house, you can always leave. <laughs> and I never left, because <laughs> I follow instructions. So, um, all right, just, uh, just a couple things real quick. Um, we're still receiving first fruits offering, so if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, um, you can still do that online on the, um, you can either do it with a, an offering bucket back there, or and or you can do it online. Uh, just go to the church app, and you can use the toggle switch there. It has uh, Henderson tithes and offerings, and also has first fruits. And uh, just a reminder: first fruits are what we use each year for our coffers, for our savings accounts when things get low during the summertime. And we're just going to believe that they won't happen this summer because we have a, a whole new crop of faithful givers. Amen. 
And so when y'all go on vacation to, to Tahiti and that 12-day cruise and, and Hawaii, you, you go, you know what? Before I pay for this cruise, I'm going to make sure I sow my tithe. So just keep that in mind, too. And then also for benevolence. We love to help people at the church. And so when people come on hard times, that's a part of, of, of being a pastor. So we want to make sure that those coffers are full for that. Also, um, quick question. Who's been here for at least six months? Well, I'm sorry. Who's been here six months or less? Six months or less. All right. Natalie, put your hand down. All right. Six months or less. All right. Cool. All right. Lying in church. Who's been here for two years or less? Two years or less. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Who's been here for three years or less? Three years or less. All right. All right. Cool. Who's been here for five years or less? Who's been here for eight years or less? Eight years or less, all right. How about ten years? Ten years or less? The jury's still out on Joe. How about twelve years? Twelve years, Dave, Marissa, okay. Yeah, Danny, yeah. No, heck, the whole Adams clan, you know. With that. Who's been here for 14 years? Fourteen years, all right. Who's been here since day one? All right. So next year, I'm sorry, next week is our 15th anniversary. And so we're going to have a very, 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 very special service next week. So um, don't miss out. It's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, unique. And so we're just going to, my wife and I really want to thank you all uh, for being a part of our family, whether you've been here for six months or 15 years, because um, we couldn't have done it without the Lord and, and you guys. And a lot of us have come and gone and gone and come and come back and everything else too. But uh, at, at, at the end of the day, um, we are here because God brought us here, and um, I'll share that more next week. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for the God that we can continually walk in your purpose and plan, and that we stand strong in your word, and that we continually walk with you in everything that we do, Father. We give you honor and glory. Amen and amen. So who this week had to transfer the trust? Oh, y'all, good, good, all right, cool, 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 all right, good deal, good deal. I sent out a just a, well, you know, I was, I've, I'm, I'm always just doing tough at the house, and I'm in prayer, and I think I was out of town when I sent a text out, and it just went out randomly to, to certain people who were told me to send it out to, and I just said, hey, you know, I don't care what you're going through, the Lord has you, you walk through this process, you walk through this course, you walk through this, this, this season of, of pain and suffering, and the key is don't don't try to avoid it. Hold his hand, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Walk through this process. Walk through the fire, and he'll lead you through. But you've got to see yourself on the other side. Amen? Amen. And I put it at the bottom of it, LOL. Don't, and in the process, don't cuss anybody out. <laughs> and unfortunately, I had one person say, Pastor, sorry, it's too late. <laughs> I, already, I already cussed him out, Pastor. Uh, I asked for forgiveness. So you know what? A word aptly spoken in season. All right, praise God. So here we go. Um, we finished last week. We were talking about faith and hope. And I'm going to do a quick review, just a quick, quick, quick review of where I was last week. And then, I, then I'm going to catch us up to where we're going to go this week. So just a quick review, and then we'll go from there. So um, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence things not seen. So that's faith. We've been talking about faith for, gosh, since the first part of the year. Uh, faith gives hope for things not seen. Not that things which are hoped for don't exist, that's important, but they're not seen by the natural eye yet. Again, I, and I said this over and again, before we moved here in 2008, I did not know you. I did not see you. I couldn't see your faces. But we had faith that God will build his church in his season. And it's not that I didn't see you in my heart or my mind, but I saw you in the spirit. And I knew that if I continually walk by faith, not by sight, I'll see you eventually. So hope gives substance to things hoped for. And we talked about e um, substance last week. What is substance? It is essence, or it is the ultimate reality that underlines all outward manifestations and change. So the way I see hope, because you've, you've got to have hope, you've got to have faith, and then you have to, from faith, evolves be your belief system, all right? And so... My definition of, of, of substance is substances are like breadcrumbs to the object that you are believing for. 
that you can't see yet, but it, ex but it exists in the spirit. Substances are like breadcrumbs to the object that you are believing for that you can't see, but it exists in the spirit. I'll read it again. So, Bible says that, uh, that faith is the substance things hoped for. So, substance are like breadcrumbs to the object that you're believing for that you can't see yet, but it exists in the spirit. And so, God will use these breadcrumbs many, many times to keep our faith up. Hypothetically, I'm, I'm laying in bed after church, and my wife is making lunch and everything like that, too. And uh, I'm watching the Cowboys lose again. And so... Um, and all of a sudden, I begin to smell something. And, oh, what is that? So that aroma is my breadcrumb because I know that there's something downstairs waiting on me. Hallelujah. All right? And so that's how God brings us to him by the aroma of his blessing. All right? So Hebrews 11.3 says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So as Christians, we must have faith that what we want to see, we've got to begin to speak it out. Now, I'm not saying speak out that you want to marry some man's husband. Well, you know what? Today, that can happen too. But you know, that's not God's will. Some man's wife or vice versa. But we have to speak God's word over the situation. We never, ever, 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 ever discuss the problem. We discuss the promise. We confess the promise. All right? Stop saying what you say. Stop saying what you see and start, and start saying what you want to see or what Word of God says that, that you should have. Amen? Um, I said this a few weeks ago when I was in the hospital with COVID. I knew that I had to get home and I knew that I had to go to the hospital. And so even though I felt horrible, I felt horrible, I began to confess. I had to say, body, you will react to God's Word, not just to this medicine. And as I began to believe that and confess that, and every time the nurse came in, every time the doctor came in, every time I had to get up, I said, I'm healed and I'm fine. They said, how do you feel? I said, I'm fine. I'm blessed. I feel great. Ready to go home. And so I'm not lying. I'm just putting God's word in my mouth about my body that it, that it must line up. Amen? So now watch this. So, and then the verse says, now faith is the substance of things hope for. So what is hope? Last week we talked about hope is to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen or to be true, to desire with expectation of obstinate or fulfillment or to expect with confidence. Uh, later on this year, I'm, my wife and I are planning this, this trip that we're going to go on, and this is, trip has been planned in my mind for 20 years. And so now I'm beginning to formulate and arrange everything in my life around September. Because my heart and my desire, my hope is that around September, we'll be able to go on this trip. And so now, everything right now, that's my hope. Everything right now begins to, to be um, anticipated and worked so I can get to that trip. When, you're, when, when a woman is pregnant, she begins to get her boppy and everything, and people start sending over gifts, and, you know, the husband leaves the house because, she, you know, she'll be irritated for a while, and, and, you know, and then all this stuff begins to happen because there is an expectation that something awesome is going to happen in about nine months. So, as a Christian, we have to make sure that our hope, our expectation is not in what we can do, but what God has said we can do through him. Amen? All right, here we go. Now, so here's the power of hope and faith. Um, this is um, 1 Thessalonians 1, 2. We are grateful to God for, our, for your lives, and we, uh, and we always pray for you. For we remember before our God and Father how you put your faith into practice, how your love motivates you to share others, or, or you share others, and how unrelenting is your hope-filled hope patience in our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 says, But since we belong to the day... We must stay alert and clear-headed by placing the breastplate of faith and love over our hearts and a helmet of the hope of salvation over our thoughts. Colossians 1.23 says, If indeed you continue in, to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon, never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. 
So keep this in your head. Hope fuels faith. Hope fuels faith. Faith fuels our belief system. Faith fuels our belief system. And belief fuels our actions. Hope fuels our faith, so it gives energy to our faith. Faith gives energy to our belief, because if you have no faith, you can't believe for something. And when you believe in something, your actions follow. Hallelujah. But here's the issue, like I said last week. So let's pick up from, 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 uh, from last week, this is now this week. But here's the issue. So many Christians have lost their hope. They've stopped hoping. They've stopped dreaming. they stopped saying, wow, I could do that. Wow, is that God's will for my life? We've lost our hope. And, y'all, I'm at the point in my life where, you know, I'll be 60 next year, and I'm still young, and I still can run. And I was talking, I was flying with this young boy, that he was 28. And uh, I said, dude, I got socks older than you are. And so, you know, he was talking to me, and I said, I bet I could outrun you right now, bro. You know, and so the point is this. Let's stop believing that at 75 our hope dies. How dare you? How dare you think at 75 or 80 your hope, your life is over? Who said that to you? You've got to begin to put in place your hope, your faith, and your belief system. And then your actions. Because if you believe your life is over, then, then, then yeah, just go ahead and die. But I believe that for right now in this season, we need some 70-year-old brains, some 80-year-old brains. You know, 25-year-old brains are great, but, you know, all they have is information. They got a lot of information, but no revelation and no demonstration. Which leads for our frustration. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, come on. Now, praise God. They need us to pour. And you know what? So some of us could get kind of, you know, begrudging and gripey. And, but you know what? Just let them inspire us. But, y'all, we, we both, we need that balance. You know, we need the 20-something, the 50-something, the 80-something to kind of balance it out. Because you, you, you can't have everything all the time. And that's just, that's, that's, that's hard to understand. So here we go. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hope deferred or, well, you know, I'll do it when. It makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. When the desire comes, it's a tree. So that means when you have no hope, man, your heart is just lonely. It's sick. It's depressed. But when you have a fire in you, when, when, when people tell me I can't do something, oh, man. Mm. Now, now, granted, if they told me that I couldn't build a house, hey, you know what, you're absolutely right, I really couldn't. But I know people who can. <laughs> I know people who can. But, church, when, when, when God puts something in your, I call this, put it in your crawl. Y'all know what a crawl is? Old folks, y'all know what a crawl is? Down in your gizzard. When, when, when God puts that in your soul, the devil will come instantly to steal it. Eve. Did God really say that? Did God really say you'd be the first doctor? Did God really say that you'd be a teacher? Did God really say that you'd be a, a, an attorney? Did, did God really say that you'd be a millionaire? Did he really say that? Yes, he said that. Did, did God really say that you would beat cancer? Did God really say that you would be married to a great Yes, he said that. So you've got to stop believing the lie and transfer the trust. Hallelujah. So here we go. Let's keep going here. So if you have no hope, you have no fuel. If you have no hope, you have no fuel for faith, and if you have no faith, you really have no future. I see so many futureless Christians all over the Internet. When you spend your whole life complaining and picking out someone's faults, you have no future. You're trying to make your future off of someone else's successes, and you're jealous of them. So, how do we regain our hope? I gave y'all, was it four or three? Three, four things last week. Or maybe I didn't. All right? How do you regain your hope? Here we go. Let's, let's break this down today and really drill down and get granular about if you've lost your hope, 
So how do you know you've lost your hope? Well, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. Or even more so says without an outlook or without a plan, the people cast off restraint. I'll give you an example. And if you don't know football, that's fine. You, you'll get my point. Um, there's a guy named Christian McCaffrey. He's a running back for San Francisco. And so the football season runs from July, oh, well, sorry, practice starts around March, March or April, spring, spring training. It goes all the way through probably December, January, predicated how, on how well you do. He, he's probably right now the best running back in the, in, in the NFL, all right? He takes two weeks off in the year to rest. Two weeks off out of 52 weeks off. He has a vision. He doesn't cast off restraint. He won't take a month off, two months off, three months off, because he has a vision for the future. When you see young kids, adults, young adults, even, even seniors who've, who've just stopped living, stopped dreaming, they're pessimistic, they complain, nothing is good enough, you've lost all hope. Because, see, my hope isn't in what Jerry can do. It's what who's in Jerry can do. My hope isn't in what I've done in the past, but it's in who I'm believing in for my future. Oh, that's good. I'll write that down. That's good. That's really good right there. That is who my hope is in. If I believed in me, we wouldn't be here. I, would, I told my wife this morning, I said, honey, if I hadn't obeyed God, I would still be in Waxahachie, Texas, on my 30 acres, chilling like a villain in McQuillan. I'd be doing, I'd be there, but, I, but I'd have no purpose. I had no purpose. So when you have no hope, you do stuff that off schedule. So here we go. All right. How do we regain our hope? Number one, you got to have a deficit. You got to have a dream. You got to have direction. And you got to have destination. To regain your hope, you got to have a deficit, a dream, a direction, and a destination. All right, number one, what's a deficit? A deficit is simply this. It's what you don't have that God says you're supposed to have. What don't you have in your life that God has promised? Healing, husband, wife, children, prosperity, financial prosperity, your health. What do you not have? that God says you should have that you don't have and that you've almost stopped hoping for because you haven't seen it. Again, remember, Abraham was 95 years old, and it took 26 years for him to have a son, the right son, the blessed son. There's a friend of mine, and a, 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 lot, a few of y'all may know him. His name is TJ, and he's in Oklahoma, and he moved away. But when he was born, his father wasn't saved. But his mother was. And they prayed for his dad's salvation for 60 years. His mom prayed. His grand so TJ's grandmother prayed for TJ's dad's salvation for 60 years. Six zero. 60, 60 years. That's 60 years. And today he's saved on fire for the Lord, TJ's grandfather. I mean, TJ's uh, dad. So you've got to have that kind of fortitude even when you don't see it. When you're praying for your kids and they're getting drunk, they're smoking crack, they're, they're, they're hurting people, they're, they're getting tickets, they're, they're, they're doing stupid stuff. What does God say? He said, your children will be blessed from your womb. When you're praying for family members who are just doing stupid stuff, when you're praying for your health, when you're praying for anything and you feel sicker and sicker, no, I'm going to stand on God's word. Hope. So, you got to have a deficit. Um, 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, whatever God has promised gets stamped with the yes of Jesus. Hallelujah. In him, this is what we preach and pray, the great amen. God's yes and our yes together, gloriously evident. So, whatever we pray for that's in God's word, he says yes and amen. Yes and amen. So we must pray the promise and not prophesy the predicament. We must pray the promise and not prophesy the predicament. Y'all, don't 
See, the reason we don't get what we want because we say what we see. That's from Charles Caps. The reason we don't get what we want because we, is, is because we say what we see. Man, I don't feel good. Man, I'm tired. Man, my back hurts. Man, my knees are sore. Man, you know, and this is what I tell y'all, please, please, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who died for our sins, stop claiming the curse. Well, you know, my allergies, well, you know, my high blood pressure, well, you know, my bad knees, well, you know, my migraines, well, you know, you know, I get migraines every, you know, it's, it's flu season, well, you know, it's, allergy. quit claiming the curse. I mean, if you don't want it, don't, I mean, y'all, y'all, my wife does not like okra. And I don't like what I don't like. Guacamole. So I don't go and say, honey, please, may, honey, please. Oh, oh, I love this guacamole. I love it. Oh, it's so, no, I know. And she's never wanted to eat chitlins with me. You know, she's not saved yet. We're working on her. But, you know, she, you know. Y'all. Quit claiming the curse, okay? If God didn't give it to you in heaven nor in, the, in, uh, in Galatians 5.2, then quit claiming it. We, complain, we, we confess the condition of our bank account more than we confess the condition of heaven on our bank account. And if you aren't a tither or a giver, then your bank account will always stay the same. If you, are a tith- if you are a tither and a giver, man, your bank account needs to grow. Isn't it cool when, you, when they'll say to you, well, well, well Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, you know what, you have a, so much money in your account, you need to get a second account. <laughs> or, you know, or, or you have so much money that you got to have money in the account, you got to have money in your 401k, or IRA, you know, you, ha- you have to have money in your safe, under your bed, uh, in your bosom, you got to have, you, you just got so much money that, you know, it's just so much, so much, so much. Y'all, and, 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 and y'all, I don't know how God talks to you, but he talks to me in a very, very unique way. Do, do, do you remember me telling you all that God has told me to, uh, to tip the van drivers more now? So the... I'm finding out the average is like zero to a dollar that the pilots will tip the, the van driver. Cheap rascals. And the flight attendants are even less. And so I normally tip $2 each way. You know, we, they take it, pick us there from the airport, take it back $2. So God says, we'll give $3. Okay, God, you know, because you're my source. Okay, so I've been giving $3, $3, $3. So what's been happening is that I'll have a 5 or a 10 or a 20, and, and I'll say, can you break a 20? And they'll probably say, no, you know, because they don't have, a, they don't have you, know, you know, $17 in cash or, or can you pick a 10? And so the past week, I'm going, wow, you know, they don't have a, you know, change for a 20 or change for a 10. I'm, I can keep my money. This is what God says. Well, then you need to bring some ones, Jerry. God ain't, yo, God ain't playing. He ain't playing. Then he said, he told me straight up, he said, you need to bring some ones then. And just hand them out, baby. Hand them out. Make it rain. So, I'll be, you know, I'll be, so that's what we're going to do from now on. I'm going to tell honey, go, 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 just go get some ones. So here we go. So deficit, dream, direction, destiny, direction. So we must pray the promise and not the pro- and prophesy the particular. Number two, imagination. Imagination. You got a dream, church. You got a dream. A lot of us have stopped dreaming as Christians. It's not on God or the dream. The Bible says that old men will dream dreams <laughs> and vision. So we think that once you get 45 or 50, the dreams are over. No, baby, it's just no. Y'all just getting warmed up here. I'm still dreaming. Y'all, when I look at some of my mentors who are just starting at 75, who are just starting at 82, and they can still jog, they can still run, they're they're still flying airplanes at 84 years old. Their own airplane, by the way. That's coming soon. So, church, think about that for a second. You may be 45, 50. Unfortunately, and some of y'all may be in the 20s, and you've stopped dreaming. What has God put in your soul that you go, that's just too big? 
God put something in my spirit 20 years ago, and it's just coming to reality now, and I'm having an opportunity to step into it now. So, imagination. Ephesians 3.20 says this. Now to, his, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to what? The power that works in us. So it's dependent on who? Us. The word think means to have thoughts, feelings, purposes, desires. It also means to consider, to perceive, to think, and to understand or to mull over. So God wants us to think more about the things that he's put in our spirits. Don't let the world tell you you can't do what God told you to do. There's a great verse. When God speaks, I listen to nobody else. And I'll say it again. There were two people who thought it was good for us to move from Dallas to here. Out of all my friends and family. Two people. Two people. <laughs> so look at this. Ephesians 3.20, this is the, the Passion Version, says this. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will undo or outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Have you stopped dreaming? Have you stopped dreaming? Numbers 12, 6 says this. And he said, hear, my, hear now my words. Is there a prophet among you? I, the Lord, make known or make myself known to him in a vision and speak to him in a dream. Y'all, we're all supposed to prophesy over our own lives what God has already said in our spirits. So imagination is the ability to see something with your heart that you can't see with your eyes. Imagination is the ability to see something with your heart that you can't see with your eyes. Perfect example. Do you know where you're, do you remember where you parked just now? What are you using right now to think about your car? You're using your imagination. Do you remember what your bathroom looks like right now? Do you remember where the sink is in your bathroom? Do you remember what color drapes you have? Or do they have drapes anymore? Blinds. Forgive me, blinds. Do you remember what is in your backyard right now? Hmm. <laughs> Just pray for Joe. Use your imagination. Y'all, imagination is not just for three-year-olds. Mommy, one day I'm going to be... Oh, stop dreaming. Hmm. The world tells us to stop dreaming, and God tells us to keep dreaming. So which one are you going to obey? Some of y'all are in jobs right now because you've stopped dreaming. Whew. Some of y'all are working in positions right now, and you're stuck because you have stopped dreaming. You've stopped allowing God to influence your imagination. Ooh, it's quiet in here, isn't it? <laughs> the air conditioning sounds so nice. Thank you, air conditioning. That's a thunderous silence right there, boy, I tell you. Romans 8, 24 says this, For in this hope we were saved by faith, but hope the object of which is seen and not hope, for who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait eagerly for it with patience and composure. So if you can't see it on the inside, you'll never see it on the outside. If you can't see it on the inside, then you'll never see it on the outside. Imagine a facility that could seat 300 people that had an incredibly large altar, that had rooms for a sound system and, and 
classes and kitchen, real cool kitchen. Imagine on the outside, just down the street, or just maybe next door, there was an incredibly awesome world-class fitness center. Top of notch stuff, treadmills, pool, sauna, ice room, weights. And then on the other side was a facility for spirit field Christian family counseling. Hmm. Hmm. Where you go in there and your wife and children could go in there and, and, and receive godly. Oh, and by the way, the state had nothing to do with it, by the way. Godly Christian counseling where you, where, where you could pray over people. And you wouldn't need medication all the time to make you feel better. You would just use the word of God and that. Oh, and then next door, next door, there was an incredibly awesome Mac Daddy-ish coffee shop that the best baristas were over there. And they were playing some really cool, unoffensive music. And, you know, if someone walked in and they didn't know Jesus, that they'd have, a, have an opportunity to meet Jesus because our baristas are all on fire for the Lord. Imagine a daycare, a daycare where the kids learned the Bible. They were six months old, you know, year old, two years old, you know, had top-notch teachers. Hmm, what a dream, what a dream, what a dream. So, hallelujah, allow God to paint the picture of his dream on your heart and that is imagination that is imagination when you go into the presence of God and he says hey you hey you let me paint this picture of what I want for your life on your heart and then I will lead you into that that's imagination see imagination is void of compromise It's void of compromise. It's easy to stay where you are if you don't have any kind of imagination. Because it's, you know why? Because it's S-A-F-E. And comfortable. Whenever you're safe and comfortable, you're getting ready to get attacked. Let's go hunting one day. I'll show you how. Watch this. Now, you can imagine your world with the power of God's word. Okay? So, number three. God's word. Okay? So, let's quickly regress. You need to have a deficit, a dream, and direction, and destination. So, direction is God's word. That's number three. Psalms 119, 130 says, The entrance and unfolding of your words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding. Here we go. Discernment and comprehension to the simple. And I am highly simple-minded, y'all. Simple-minded. The entrance and unfolding of your words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. Psalms 119, 102 says this, I have not turned aside from your ordinances, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn an oath and have confirmed it that I will keep your righteous ordinances, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. Mm. So church, the only direction you need to get is from the word of God. That is your key process of the word of God. You are here because of the word of God in my life, you were, or in my wife's life. You are here because of that, because we stood on God's word. We are here for 15 years. We could have been here for three. We could have been here for five or ten. Trust me, trust me. But because of my reliance on God's word, I'm still here. Because of your reliance on God's word, you're here. Because of your reliance on God's word, you're here with us. And if you ever think that God's word isn't going to be validated, his word says that, how do I put this in layman's terms? The, 
the Bible talks about his word being a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. God's word is our eternal light in darkness. And if we're going to walk by faith and not by sight, we've got to understand that sometimes we can't use our eyes to see. We've got to use God's word to lead us to that darkness. Proverbs 20, 24 says, man's steps are ordered by the Lord. How then can a man understand his way? Y'all, that is so important. That is so important. What do I mean by that? Y'all, if God is guiding your steps, how can you give any input? Hear me. If God is guiding your steps, how dare you tell God where to go or how to do it or no? Psalms 32, 8, the Lord will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and my eye will be upon you. Understand, guys, and I was talking to somebody about this. Y'all, God is watching everything you do. Everything you do. And, he lo- and he's doing it not to control you, but to guide you. Newsflash, God is not a control freak. He gives us free will. And he says, choose life, choose death. And it's up to us to say, Lord, I don't want to be comfortable. Lord, I don't want to be safe. I want to go recklessly with you and follow you all days of my life. Number four, manifestation. Manifestation. Here's the key. God will take you to completion. A lot of us feel like we're medium rare. Some of us feel like we're rare. Some of us feel like we're just been seared. Some of us are raw. <laughs> you're raw, you're in the refrigerator, you haven't been seasoned, nothing. You're just in the fridge, in wrapper. Take your pick. Some of us are almost done, but not done yet. And you know what? The tougher the meat, the longer the boil. <laughs> Some of y'all been in the crock pot for 45 years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and he'll go in and put a fork in you and go, oh, okay, put them back in. It ain't ready yet. It ain't ready yet. I mean, you know who you are. Your heart is hard. Y'all, you, you, you've stopped dreaming. Or, or he'll take you out, and, and he's put some paprika in there. He's put some onions, some basil, some thyme, some garlic. He's, he's put, he's put jalapeno, but everything in the good. But you're bland. You're just bland. You have no flavor to you. Hallelujah. This is a message about Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man, one given to lies, and not a son of man changing his mind. Does he speak and not do what he says? Does he promise and not come through? That is so good. I mean, y'all, God ain't going to lie. He will complete what he started in you, but you've got to be tender. You've got to be well, not even, either, you know, I don't know if God likes his meat well done or whatever, but you know what, you've got to be You've got to be cooked to the temperature of your purpose. Oh, that is good. Woo! I need some water now. Hold on. Hold on. Because you know what? Who likes a well-done steak? Be honest. Be, well, no, well done. Well done. No red, no blood, no nothing. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Which one of us say people here like a medium rare done? Medium. Okay, medium. Medium. Which one of you weirdos like rare? Okay. Y'all can leave. Bye. Get out. Dustin, take, take, just take with you. I mean, y'all, it's, it's still living. You still kick when you bite it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, for whatever purpose he has you in, he will be the ultimate chef. Okay? Don't get mad at somebody who has a ministry to Certain people that, that, that are, are, are abrasive to your personality. That's their ministry. That, y'all, that hit me. We get mad at people who, 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 who minister in well-done areas or in rare areas or, 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 or areas that, you know what? Some people may like it bland. Some people may like it overly seasoned. Where does God have you? Are you allowing him to write his prescription on your heart? Here we go. Isaiah 55, 8, warm son here. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are, are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. 
For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth, making it bare and sprout, and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. This is God talking. It will not return to me void. It won't come back here useless or without result, without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. That's good. That's good. Psalms 27, 30 says this. What? What would have been become of me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living? Mm. Psalms 89, 33 says this. But when I never stop loving him nor fail to keep my promise to him, no, I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said about you. I have sworn an oath to David, and in my holiness, I cannot lie. So, y'all, whatever God said about you, he ain't lying, and he ain't taking it back. Satan will lie to you to get you to take it back, but he ain't lying. Hebrews 10, 23 says this, So now we must cling tightly to the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promise. Proverbs, uh, Psalms 27, 14, Wait and hope and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage, and let your heart be stout. Y'all know what stout is? Stout is like a dude who is six foot four, 260, and 2% body fat. And he's coming through your door right now. That's a stout bro, all right? Or, or a building, or something that, that is hard to be moved. And he says, you know what, when you hear the voices, because y'all, everyone, it doesn't mean you're crazy, but everybody hears voices. Everybody does. Jesus heard them. He just rebuked them. When you hear that voice of lying, say, you know what, I refuse to believe that. I stand on God's word. God said, I'll be prosperous, I'll be blessed, I'll be healthy. And stand, and y'all, you may have to re re rebuke it more than once a day, more like once a minute, until he stops. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope in the Lord. And that's where we are as Christian church. If you've lost hope, if you've lost hope, get it back. And y'all, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. Let, uh, in process for a second, have you lost hope in any area of your life, in your health, with your family? I don't care how far gone your kids are, your grandkids, your spouse. You, I don't care how far gone they are. God has a long arm, a long arm. And you keep praying, you keep prophesying. When you see what they do, you say, you know what, praise God. I think I, you, you say the opposite. We've got to get in the mindset that we don't say, say what we see, we say what we want to see according to the Word of God. The Word of God will transcend all situations. Hallelujah. Understand that, church. So we have to, we have to stop being so, so um, predictable by the world. Because if we are, Satan will keep throwing at you. So, y'all, my prayer today is that, you know what, I don't care what you see. I don't care what you have been through. I don't care what, I don't care how far you've gone. God is still on the throne. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. There is one demonic superpower that can derail all hopes. That can derail the power of God. There is one demonic superpower that can even stop Jesus working and his miracles. And I'll share with you next week. <laughs> attitude, attitude. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, that, that uh, we just continually walk in faith and grace and peace and glory and that Lord, we put our hope in you. 
We put our hope in you. We put our hope not in us, not in our income, our skill, not in our gender, not in our nationality, <laughs> not in uh, uh, the house we live, the car we drive. We put our hope in you, in you, Lord, in you. In you, Father God. And Lord, forgive us if we've lost hope. Because we haven't lost hope in you. We lost hope in us, which we shouldn't be believing in the first place, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we now stop, reassess, and say, hmm, I've had my eyes on the wrong God. Let me get my eyes back on Jehovah on the Messiah. Let me get my eyes back on my creator, whose name is God, Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. That is my God. In you I have my hope. Not in my accolades. Paul says that I press on to the high call of Christ Jesus. I forget those things which are behind, but I press on. Lord, we press on. We have hope in you, Father. Hope in you, Lord Jesus. Hope in you, Lord Jesus. I want to pray for anyone real quick here who feels like they've lost hope. Hallelujah. I love to pray. So let's stand real quick. And you know what? If you feel like, you know, Pastor, man, I, I've, <laughs> I've lost hope, or I had lost hope until today, and, and I just need some, you know, a spiritual Celsius. <laughs> Come on up. I want to pray with you real quick. Come on up. Come real quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hit the fans, please. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus. Anybody else real quick? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you lift up your hands? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And I want you just to pray this prayer. Lord, forgive me for, keep, for, for getting my eyes off of you. I no longer look to myself or my children or my spouse or my job or my money or my strength. I look to you. From this day forward, Lord, I will not depend on anything but you. You are my source. You are my only hope. And my hope is in you. My hope is in you. So, Lord, right now, I lay down those idols. <laughs> and that's anything that I put before you or alongside you. Thank you, Father God, for the people here, here, Father. Lord, I speak healing. Lord, we have your redemption over every person here, Father God, that from this day on, Lord Jesus, their hope, their hope, their hope, their hope is in you, Lord. They, they will transfer the trust. 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 I see everyone up here having l shoulder pads that look like an elephant. And I see you in the spirit bent over and crouched down because you've been carrying a weight that God did not give you to carry. Yes, you've been carrying a lie. You've been carrying things that are not yours. And God is saying right now, it, you have to release yourself, not him.
He's here. The Bible says that, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon me. God's yoke, not your yoke, not man's yoke. God's yoke. So only you know the lie that you believed in. Only you know when you stop trusting God. Only you. Only you. And so, Father God, right now, Lord, we just thank you, Father God, that they are blessed from this point on, Father. And, Lord, even if there's been a little bit of pride there, Lord Jesus, we just destroy pride. No more pride. And, Lord, now that you'll begin to allow, that they will begin to walk into their destiny. Mm. Not only the people who are up here right now, but some of y'all who are back there, you are living with a works mentality. You're feeling like that if you don't do certain things, God won't love you. God won't receive you. God won't, God won't accept you. And trust me, you can, that is true. <laughs> That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus did what we can't do. And your efforts mean nothing to him when there's no faith involved. So from this day on, you are the righteousness of God. He won't love you any more. He won't love you any less, no matter what you do. And your hope is sealed with him. And the works that he accepts are his son's sacrifice. He just wants relationship with you. Relationship. So, Father God, from this day on, we just lift you up, Father. And every person here and every person that, under my voice, who, 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 who has a works mentality, Lord, that you will release them. And that they'll begin to trust you and serve you, Father God. Trust and serve. Trust and serve. Trust. Transfer the trust and then serve you with their whole life, Father. We give you honor and glory, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So here's what we're going to do, y'all. So next week, when we come back to Iglesia, uh, I don't know, yeah, before, is that it, before? Let me see here. Let me see what my wife texts me. <sighs> uh, and one thing we're going to do for our celebration next week, we're going to have some bagels and cream cheese beginning of service. So get her early. Let my little babies eat, okay, so they won't be hungry for, uh, for class. And then, um, and then we can um, have, have service. It'll, and it'll be a different service. So uh, if, you, if you know anybody who's, who's, who's looking for a church, who wants to know the, the, the bones of a church, have them come Sunday and they'll really know. But it'll be a different service. It'll be a unique service. And um, we're just going to kind of thank the Lord for 15 years. Most churches, from what I understand, last about three to, half, three to seven years right now. 1,500 pastors a month retire. No, sorry, quit. 1,500 pastors a month quit the ministry. And I know why. I know why. <laughs> we know why. So, but um, I'll quit when I <laughs> when I'm down there. So, all right. Love you guys. See y'all next week. Have a blessed Sunday. Love y'all. Kisses. Hugs.